front end, back end, authentication, how to start, how to connect, how to be secure. Pause, take a deep breath. It may sound hard, but it's only hard if you haven't done it before. In this video, we will build a full stack application using Vue and FastAPI. And we're gonna do this in three steps. One, we will create a FastAPI application with a database. This will be the backend. Two, we're gonna build a dynamic Vue JavaScript application, which is the front end. And then three, we are gonna implement JWT, which is JSON Web Token, and we're gonna be using that for user registration and user login. So yeah, our application will allow a user to be able to register, then log in, and then use the functionality of the app. So grab your drink, I have mine somewhere, and I'm gonna show you how to build a full stack application starting with the backend. All right, so let's go over what we already have started. We have a main.py file sitting in our fast API directory with a requirements.txt file that has all the dependencies that we need for our backend portion of this project. So the very first thing we need to do is make sure you're in our fast API directory and let's do a pip install dash r requirements.txt. This will download all the dependencies that we need for our fast API application. All right, now the very next thing we need to do is add all of our dependencies. There's gonna be a lot of dependencies, so bear with me. But really what we're doing is we're adding the dependencies for our authentication in JWT, our SQL Alchemy for our database, fast API, and Uvicorn. Next thing we need to do is add in the dependencies. So right here we can see our secret key is going to equal your secret key. You can make it whatever you want. For GWT, we're gonna be using the algorithm of HS256 with an access token that expires in 30 minutes. So when we create a GWT, you only have access to that GWT for 30 minutes, and then that GWT is not valid anymore. We're gonna be creating a SQLite database, which is just a file structure database right here in our application. And then all of this stuff is what we need to set up the database and then set up our application. Next, we need to add our cores policy for our application by saying app dot some type of middleware. And we're just gonna be adding our cores middleware, which just allows all of our origins for right now. Next, we wanna add our models, which is our user, which we need to make sure that we see that we're gonna be using a hashed password. So we're gonna be encrypting our password before saving it into the database. And then we're gonna have our to do, which is gonna have ID, title, description, owner ID. Now we're gonna to need to be able to authenticate a user. And then we're gonna be able to create a to do for that user that's authenticated. And then this base.metadata.createAll, this will create the tables for us within our SQL Alchemy database that we already have. So this is perfect stuff. If you don't already have a database, SQL Alchemy will create it for you. We're gonna be using a dependency injection, so let's make sure that we add our git db dependency, which opens up our database and closes it when it's not being used. Next, we're gonna add a whole bunch of models. Now, this is for Pydantic, so we can properly do data validation on our requests and our responses. This is a mix between our authenticated user, our users, and our to-dos. You can see that we have our like, to-do get, to-do create, because we're gonna be dynamically creating the IDs and all that kind of stuff. So here's really important to make sure that we're using the right models for our Pydantic and data validation. And then lastly, we want to add our dependency for our database and then our authentication setup for our password contacts and our OAuth2 schema. So now we're ready for our actual code for our authentication before we go into adding the business logic for being able to create and add to-dos. So this is gonna be quite a bit of code that I added. We're gonna have our get current user, what we're gonna be using for our user dependency. Our user dependency is what we are going to be using to make sure that our JWT is good to go, our user is good to go, and making sure that we have a valid user before we can accept to-dos. We're gonna be adding our user dependency, which has to be under our get current user because we are using annotated depends right here. Our verify password, get password hash, that's just a simple function that returns the data that we need. We have a create access token, where here we're creating the access token. And then we are also setting the current date in UTC plus the expires delta of 30 minutes. So if there is an expires delta, it's gonna be 30 minutes by default. 
If not, we're going to go to 15 minutes and we're going to set that as an EXP within our JWT token. And then we encode our token using our secret key and algorithm. All right. And then we have our get user, which just returns the user that we have and then authenticate the user. And again, if you need this code, you can download this entire repository from the link below. And then lastly, we just want a way for that user to be able to register and create the token. So we have our register, which allows a user to be able to register and we go ahead and we'll hash the password before we save it to the database. And then we will create a token when the user tries to authenticate and then we can return the user. And then we'll have a simple to-do application where we can get our to-dos, delete to-dos, create to-dos, um, and that's pretty much all we want to do. We don't want to be able to update quite yet, so we can create to-dos, get all your to-dos, and delete to-dos. But these are only for a specific user, so this is not like everyone shares the same to-dos. You have to authenticate yourself, and that's what this current user, user dependency, is doing. It's grabbing our get current user function up here. Um, and it's going to validate our user. And if it's not validated, then we're going to throw a JWT error. So our front end will not be able to get authenticated. Now, this is pretty much all we need for our backend application. We are able to register, sign in, and create to dos based on the registration. So to run our app, we can just do a uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. We have our application up and running. Now, the next thing we are going to do is create the view front end application. Now, V-U-E is pronounced view. I've called it VU multiple times in my life, but it is pronounced view, um, like you're viewing something. So make sure you're using the word view and you don't sound like a big dummy like I have for years. So make sure you're in view. Now we need to CD into our view directory. And now we need to install the view CLI. So we can do an MPX at view slash CLI, create view to do app. This will download the CLI for view onto your machine where you have to pick certain things. So we're going to say default right here for the first one. If it's your first time ever using view, it might ask you if you want to use like node package manager, make sure you say yes to NPM. It's by far the, the biggest standard in what we're going to be using in this video. Now make sure you CD into our new app of view to do app. There has been countless amount of times that I go ahead and I just start doing things inside this view directory and not jumping into the actual project that it just created for us. So make sure you're in the right directory or the right child directory. After this, we need to install Axios, which is what we're going to be using to call the HTTP and the APIs from our fast API application. And then we want to do an NPM install for our view router, and that's going to allow us to switch screens. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into source assets, and I'm going to create a new file here called custom CSS. And I am just going to dump in a lot of CSS here. So we have our container, form group, form control, button, button primary. If you're used to bootstrap, these are very similar to bootstrap. They are not bootstrap, but it's very similar. So make sure you add all of those. And then I'm going to jump down into our components. Now inside our components, I'm going to create three separate components. The first one is going to be to do list dot view. See, I did it dot view. Where we need to add a bunch of code that allows us to be able to see all of the to do's that we currently have and be able to delete them. So if we kind of look through this, we can see there's an unordered list that allows us to be able to see our, our to-dos, be able to delete the to-dos, and then be able to read our current title and description for our to-dos, or be able to type them in to a form and then submit them. And then here, if we scroll down, we have our async methods, which allows us to be able to call the endpoints that we need to call. The next component I'm going to create is called user login. 
Here we can see that this is just going to be a simple form where a user can type in their username and password. And that's all you really need to be able to log in or not. And then the last one is going to be user register dot view. And here we are also going to just add in some code to be able to create a user based on their username and password. All right, now next thing we want to do is inside our source directory, let's create a new folder called router. And now inside our new router, let's create a new file called index.js and paste in our routes, which is essentially just going to be able to use the routes that we just created to our to-do list, user login and user register. Let's go into our app.view and replace that with just a simple template that allows us to be able to look at our new routers. And lastly, let's go into our main.js and replace this to be able to use our new custom CSS to make sure that view knows that this is not a production app and then be able to create our routers from there. Now we can go ahead and say npm run surf. And when we run our application, we're going to see immediately that our app crashes. And it's saying it can't read the property of use. And that use is the use that we're using, use that we're using inside index.js right here. So this view.use router. And that's because we are using a certain version of view router that we need to actually downgrade. And that's because of how the current view router works with nested objects. So let's go ahead and just say npm install at view at two and then view dash router three. Now, once you install that, if we go back and do an npm run serve, we can see that our application is loading fine. Now let's do a slash register because that's where our register is. We can see there's a simple registration. And here we can type in coding with Roby where I will make the test one, two, three, four, exclamation mark, the password. We registered, now we are in login. If I type in something that doesn't exist, like test test, we can see that we can't log in. But if I go in and I type in my user, I click login, we have our simple to-do list where we can say, yay, it worked. With our description of, I don't know, description and we can add a new description. We can add a couple more to do's here. Now, if you're wondering, hey, Eric, why are you using fast API here? Well, go ahead and check out this video where it's somewhere linked. I don't know where it is. It's around this area. And I will see you in the next video.